Un coup de cœur. 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 Thank you, Mr. President, and my apologies to the prosecution for interrupting their uh, questioning. I know everyone is tired, so I'll be as brief as possible. But my uh, question relates to our questioning of Professor Chandler later, and I would like to receive some guidance from the trial team because I do not want to violate any of the orders as set by you. And they relate to your decision to not accept our documents under Rule 87-4. To be clear, we do not want to revisit that decision at this moment, but we want to get some clarification on its consequence. So in order not to violate your specific orders. The point is that we understand your position that they cannot be admitted as evidence or cannot be considered to be put before the chamber under Rule 87-4, but we want to know if and how we can rely on the contents of those documents, the substantive contents. And the reason I bring this up is because in an earlier decision on a request by Ying Sari, you have ruled that several documents that do not satisfy the test of 87.4 can still be relied on for the contents of their documents. The, the contents of these documents in order to question uh, this witness. So our question would be, can we in any way use the contents of those documents in order to formulate questions to Professor Chandler? And, um, I must say, as a slight addition to this request for clarification, we have by filing that Rule 87-4 request, try to comply with your trial, train, trial chamber's earlier ruling that we need to do so in order to be able to impeach a witness uh, using, quote-unquote, new documents. And I don't want to sound too miserable, but we do have the feeling that we just cannot get it right. We have tried to comply with your ruling. We have filed a request, as especially um, Judge Laverne seemed to insist on. Um, and these documents are relevant. They, again, we will not attempt to put them before the chamber uh, to cons constitute evidence under 87.4. But we do uh, need to rely on these documents in order to effectively question this witness and not use these documents that would impede our possibilities to do so. So our question simply is, can we rely on the contents of the documents? And I guess I can also add that if we cannot rely on the contents of these documents, I would like some guidance as to how to deal with information that is now, let's say, in the public conscience of my defense team. We have read this stuff. We cannot erase this from our minds. And, uh, if you give us some guidance as to how to proceed, if we cannot rely on these documents altogether, I would be grateful. Thank you.
uh, addressed uh, to the Yang Sari defence team. This matter was dealt with at paragraph 5, uh, and I'll just read it out again precisely what the Chamber said in response to the Yang Sari application, because it applies to the Nguyen Chia team as well, So I'm quoting, it bears emphasising that while the Chamber did not consider the remainder of the documents to which E-1 Two stroke two four stroke four refers to meet the internal rule eighty seven four criteria. This decision clearly states that there is no barrier to the Yang Sari defence calling on their contents when formulating questions to the expert where the Yang Sari defence provides advanced courtesy copies of this material to the chambers and the other parties. Uh, as the Yang Sari defence has since provided the ERNs for the relevant documents on the shared materials drive, this latter condition has been satisfied. End of quote. So is that a sufficient uh, response to enable you to plan uh, for your questioning? Thank you, Judge Cartwright. That is uh, crystal clear. And just for the record, I would then like to state that uh, we have, in fact, uploaded all the documents that we would like to rely on, so they are accessible to all the parties uh, in this courtroom. But the message is clear. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, if I may, two very brief housekeeping uh, matters. Uh, one for my and Professor Chandler's benefit. Uh, we were requested during the break to both speak more slowly. Uh, I'll do my best, and I uh, apologize on behalf of both of us to uh, particularly uh, the interpreters and those listening in Khmer and French. Um, we simply uh, wish to get through a lot of material fairly quickly, but if you, if you could uh, slow down a little bit, Professor Chandler, I'll do the same. Um, and thank you, Your Honours. Uh, I meant to raise this before the break, and I apologise for not doing so. Um, simply a matter of, of scheduling and timing. Um, we were, and I just want to put before you our understanding of, of where we are at, so perhaps the Chamber can consider it um, at the next. Uh, when we when we break for the next uh, session, um, we were allocated two and a half days, which in re real time uh, amounts to approximately 12 hours, if, if my maths are correct. Um, by the end of today, we will have done uh, less than seven hours, or close to seven hours, leading about uh, a bit over five hours uh, tomorrow, which, which would take up um, the, the entire day. I just say that so that Your Honours, uh, if possible, can consider it. Um, before we come back and, and give us uh, your instructions, uh, we, will, we will do our uh, utmost um, as far as the prosecution is concerned to finish um, early tomorrow uh, by the end of the first session. Um, it will take a short amount of time. I hope the defence will also be accommodating, particularly in light of all of the procedural issues that have arisen and and now I'll return to my examination, uh, Professor Chandler, thank you 
uh, again for coming back and realize it's late in the day as, as council um, for Nunchi indicated that he's a little bit tired so we, we do appreciate you um, continuing to assist us in answering questions on a fairly complex subject matter. There is really only one remaining uh, subtopic on the issue of the institutions of democratic Cambodia that I wish to touch upon before moving on to yet another topic. And the issue I wish to touch upon is the resignation of Norman Sienok um, in March and April 1976 or the events surrounding that resignation. Uh, you've uh, dealt with it um, in, in, in some detail in Brother No. 1, E3 slash 17, uh, and the relevant passages uh, in Khmer 00821775 I'm only pointing to those to those uh, passages so that everybody has them uh, available um, because you have actually discussed in, in those passages the documents which I will be showing. So uh, perhaps we can speed things up by going straight to the source documents and if need be we can refer back to the book. Um, Professor, the events took place in the first half of March as reported by the documents. And the the first document that relates is a standing committee minute uh, dated the 11th of March 1976. It is dated the 11th of March, but it deals with events on the 11th and on the 13th. It, it is document number E3-197. And the Agenda on the first page is indicated as Sienok's resignation. We will go to a, a passage which uh, is of interest uh, to us today. This is at Khmer ERN 00 0 0 0 0 English ERN 0 0 and French ERN 0 0 I understand you've just been given an English translation of that particular passage. And the text is as follows. I will read it in English um, for the benefit of uh, those who don't have a hard copy. Uh, if we could place the Khmer version on the screen uh, for Khmer readers, that, that would be appreciated. This is topic number three of uh, Professor Chandler. Opinions of Ankar meeting on the evening of the 13th. Comrade Hem reported to the Standing Committee on the CNU problem. He has decided absolutely to resign his position. He explained that Ankar should take pity on him, that he would even crawl and show the gesture of respect, whatever, just let him resign. This resignation is not done in opposition to us. The next passage, Comrade Secretary explained that this problem is a major one. Leave it for our centre to decide. But the Comrade Secretary outlined the principal ideas on which the entire standing committee had already agreed as follows. Number one, do not leave Sienuk. I apologise. Number one, do not let Sienuk leave. In square brackets, the country. 
This is the first measure. And number two, must convene the Cabinet of Ministers, report to the Cabinet of Ministers to decide, then go meet with Sihanouk again, with Penhuk participating. There are two, brief, two more brief passages that I wish to deal with, uh, or, or read through and then uh, come back to some questions, Professor. Um, further down, uh, as we continue the same topic, there is section B, which starts as follows, and it's a discussion of the resignation, Quote, he joined with our revolution even though he had conflicts with us. This is why the party has decided for him to be chairman of the Presidium of State, but he did not agree. So whether he stays or goes, it is his matter. We keep him as a dignitary. We do not kill him. But for the nation and the people, he bears serious guilt in his status of a killer of the people. Therefore, our decision is reasonable in every way. We will maintain him, but if he keeps on struggling to free himself, we must end it. The next passage uh, starts with number five. The direction of the development of the revolution, we must end feudalism just like this. The chess game has gotten to that point. The entire feudalist regime has been permanently smashed and dug out by the revolution. The kings existing over 2,000 years must in the end be clean. We have no way out other than this one. Professor, looking at those uh, deliberations and, of course, your uh, research into the events and the, uh, the, the policies of the, the party centre, um, could you or are you able to opine about that last passage where, having looked at the position of Noah Dom Sihanouk, the party center discusses ending feudalism and 2,000 years of kings existing in the country. What, if anything, does that represent in terms of party direction or party policy? Well, they simply wanted to get him out of the way. What had happened, one of the reasons they had hung on to him so long and why he had felt able to hang on to them was the uh, survival of his friend Zhou Enlai in Be Be Beijing. And when Zhou Enlai died, uh, Sinuk lost his support, his direct support in China, and important to the Khmer Rouge, the Chinese uh, angle. But they felt that it was perfectly safe to remove him from any positions of power and lock him up. I mean, the struggle against feudalism, and, uh, which is a euphemism for uh, royalty in the, generally in the uh, CPK writings, uh, required them uh, to stop giving uh, Sihanouk the privileges that had been uh, valuable at the time of the beginning of the revolution uh, in, uh, in seven, no, the beginning of the alliance in 70 and so forth, very important for him to be uh, maintained for the outside world and for some people in Cambo in, inside Cambodia. This last number has been uh, cut way back or pushed way up, depending on what your political views are. There were millions of them are very few, we don't know. But having him in the picture was not helpful to them. It looks as if Sinuk, uh, in his request there at the beginning from uh, uh, reported by uh, Q. Simpon, was terrified of being killed, I guess with justice, and was willing to just give up all responsibility, so there was no problem with him. 
And so, Comrade Secretary Pol Pot decided this was an appropriate way to proceed with the continuing, uh, well, perpetual, I guess, perpetual war against feudalism that the party was always been dedicated to. Just when you say um, the Comrade Secretary had decided to proceed in this particular way, um, does that mean that um, this decision uh, is different from um, the collective decision making that you discussed yesterday? Not really. I mean, he has the overriding vote. He listens to the discussion, but then can override. He's got a veto veto power over the discussion. I'm pretty sure that people were just in the room, just waiting to see what he was going to say. None of them are on record as supporting Sinek's continuing presence. But this was a kind of a prime ministerial thing to do against a former chief of state as a status. You can't have a minor cabinet minister making the policy, so it was appropriate. I think uh, I, I, I'm, I'm sure the standing committee agreed with all of this. And there's never been any echoes later on that they wanted to, to play any more of an active role in Cambodia. Thank you. And before we leave this uh, topic entirely, um, I wish to um, briefly look at uh, a, a document uh, dated the 4th of April. 1976, so this is uh, within less than a month. Um, it's another FIBIS uh, uh, transcript. Uh, the document number is E3-275. Unfortunately, not available in Khmer or French. Um, in English, the ERN is 00167605. And we do have a hard copy, Professor. This is a different page. Um, this uh, is um, attributed to um, Mr. Q. Sampan. Uh, the, it is uh, a Phnom Penh domestic service uh, on the 4th of April 1976. Broad, broadcast of that service, and is it is entitled Statement of the Government of Democratic Cambodia on the request by Chief of State Narodom Siena for retirement, read by Deputy Prime Minister Q. Sampong, presumably live. Um, I just wish to um, read, in fact, if we look on the screen, I will read just below that, um, just below that uh, square. The Council of Ministers realizes that Samdek Norodom Sihanouk is a monarch with a high sense of patriotism who has actively contributed to the struggle for national liberation against the most ferocious war of aggression of the U.S. imperialists and their lackeys. Part 3 of the resolution of the National Congress dated the 27th of April 1975 clearly noted the good deeds of Sandek and solemnly proclaimed to maintain the status of Sandek Norodom Siena as Chief of State in the new phase of Cambodia's history and in the new Cambodian society. But someday wishes to retire, so he will have time for the private life of his family after having conducted political activities for 35 years. In the last sentence, the Council of Ministers has expressed regret over the request for retirement by Sandik Norodom However, out of respect for the highest wishes of Sandik, the Council of Ministers had decided to approve the request for retirement. Again, Professor Chandler, um, in light or on the basis of your research and studies into these events, um, 
does this reported um, decision of the Council of Ministers um, reflect a policy that was at the time in place in relation to Norway? Yes, it would if we hadn't seen the previous document. I mean, the previous document says what the policy was going to be, which was just to lock him up and we're doing the right thing not to kill him. And he's been an enemy of the state for basically 35 years, many of the people for 35 years. It's important to know that these FBIS broadcasts, uh, the translations are, uh, people have seen some of the original Khmer, they're, they're very good, they're very good, they were very good translations. But they were targeted, Cambodia was not full of people listening to the radio. These broadcasts were targeted for, to a large extent for overseas and also for, perhaps for the semi-education of cadre who might be a little bit confused about Sinuk's status, so they want to they don't want to make an official announcement saying we, we don't like him, we threw him out. They have this kind of like a front in front of the party. It's a front announcement that's pleasing to the listeners and convinces people overseas or attempts to convince people overseas who had no access to these other documents uh, that this is a uh, rational uh, regime who is friendly and, and indeed uh, almost uh, honoring this figure who's been basically the only person most of the world has ever heard of when they think of Cambodia. So, yeah, I mean, that's my answer. It's a fascinating document for those reasons. If you see the, see the two of them, you, see, you can see what they're doing. Uh, it's interesting. Thank you, Professor. And we move on now to another topic. Uh, and, and it is the topic of the alleged uh, policy <coughs> regarding um, real or perceived enemies of the party. And, and in this uh, section we will deal um, to some extent with S21, although um, as it is not currently part of this first trial, uh, we have been directed not to um, delve into great detail of the inner so, um, we are focusing on the policy and the broad outline of its uh, implementation. Just by way of a general introduction um, so that we have a logical place to start. Um, could you, uh, in two minutes or less, describe for us the uh, establishment of S21 um, based on your research at the time of the establishment of the facility and its uh, basic description, if you could. An institution called S21 was established quite early in the regime. I forget the exact month. It was sometime in the latter part of 1975. Uh, for a while, it was situated in the psychiatric hospital in Tak Pao, uh, other times in old police headquarters. Uh, its tasks, as far as can be determined, all of these early records have disappeared, were to find and root out some of the uh, former members of the Lon Nol regime. Uh, and and uh, perhaps also some uh, foreigners, minority people, that some of the early uh, traders, things like that, that they just thought would not be. But, but it was not systematic. The records weren't uh, kept in a systematic way. In April 75, 76, so as I said earlier, was this turning point, this darkening shunt of the Cambodian uh, government. Uh, that's when they started to be convinced that there were enemies inside the party, particularly from the eastern zone, who'd been responsible for some grenade explosion in Phnom Penh. There was no evidence of casualties. Uh, <clears throat> and soon after that, Kankek Eo Doit was put in command of a new facility, a high school uh, that many people in the room have uh, visited as the to a uh, museum of genocidal crimes. That opened up in May uh, in this uh, former high school. And soon after that, uh, prisoners uh, began to uh, pour in uh, for interrogation. Uh, and as it turned out, which was not, uh, we're not quite sure if this was true of the early S21, certainly was of the, of the subsequent one, the, the, uh, the one in Tutu Slang. Uh, 
uh, uh, for interrogation, in many cases torture, all cases interrogation, some cases torture, and all cases uh, execution. Thank you. And just a couple more questions on, uh, on the, on the um, uh, facility itself. Um, I don't want to go into any great detail here, just to set um, the, the basics in, in, in place. Um, um, apart from that uh, location uh, that you describe in a Northland High School, uh, uh, did uh, the facility uh, also use any other uh, locations, uh, or was that the uh, only uh, one that you uh, can uh, use in your uh, research? Uh, That was the only one that bore that number. An affiliated facility at uh, Presa was called S24. This was a, a more of a re-education facility, although some people were moved from there uh, into S21 if they were thought to be more serious uh, offenders than they'd been thought to be when they were brought in. Uh, Presa, uh, ironically or not, was the uh, political prison in the Lanao regime, so it was a, an existing prison facility, unlike the high school of uh, and uh, Now, looking at uh, your book, which deals with the facility, um, the voices from S21, and the D number for this document is D108 slash 50 slash 1.4.6. You discuss, uh, among many other things, the, the mission of the facility. And I wish to look at that passage briefly. The committee here are in zero zero one nine one eight four five to four six. The English ERN is zero zero one if we could also display the Khmer text on the screen for, um, for the Khmer readers in course and in the public gallery. In this passage, Mr. Professor Chandler, you, you uh, state the following. The country was administered by a handful of politically obsessive uh, men and women, many of them former school teachers, uh, who saw it as their long-term duty uh, to oversee, uh, punish, uh, and transform uh, the people uh, under their control. Uh, the cadre uh, in charge of S21 in turn were under the surveillance of the party center, in brackets, Mochim Pak. Similarly concealed from you, and as members of an independent regiment, they worked under military discipline. A little bit further down in the same passage, there is the following, um, there are the following sentences. Its mission was to protect the party center. It accomplished this task in part by killing all the prisoners and in part by altering their autobiographies to align them with the requirements and suspicions of the party. Professor, if I could ask you to expand on your conclusion that the center's mission was to protect the party center. How did you arrive at that conclusion? And if you could describe perhaps in more detail uh, what points to the mission. 
I'm not sure about your last phrase. At what point of the mission? What does that mean? I'm sorry, uh, probably misspoke. I, I just uh, meant to say what point to the mission. Um, what, what, what evidence and uh, what you considered in uh, considering in coming to that conclusion about the mission to protect the party center? And, and if we could, if I could just remind both of us to uh, proceed slowly. I mean, this uh, mission shows up, uh, I think it was taken for granted by Doig, who had already uh, had a previous job of, uh, at the same, uh, the Amleng uh, uh, Center in the, during the Civil War. Uh, it was to protect the center and to uh, 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 locate and uh, basically sweep clean, which is the Cambodian phrase for purge, uh, opponents, or perceived opponents to the regime. Uh, <coughs> obviously, it uh, purged some real opponents to the regime, but the examination of the confessions makes it impossible to determine which one, which these people were. So you have to say, I think, uh, generally these were perceived opponents. Uh, there was also a, 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 a point I made in the book that I drew from my colleague uh, Stephen Heder, and I think it makes very good sense, was that one of the pur another supplementary or, or uh, yeah, purpose of the place was to provide the party center with a history of not only opposition to the party, but also to the uh, uh, how do you say, the uh, extermination of that opposition on a continuous basis. In other words, it's as, uh, horrible to use these images, but as a kind of a cleaning mechanism, there's always an operation. Your opponents are always being punished. Your views are always being uh, supported, and so on. This, this is a, it's a guess. Nobody ever, they, they never use it, but there are parallels with the Soviet experience of the history being the history of the, uh, the Stalin's history of the Communist Party is the story of his overcoming his enemies. I think this may have been a distant model. That's how they conceived history was punishing enemies. So it was a very consistent, um, very deep uh, notion that the center had to be protected and that these people who had strayed or pushed or whatever word you want to use into S21, rather like Sino could, wait, could never be allowed to come out of that, of that institution. They couldn't go out into the street and say where they'd been or what had happened to them. They had to be demolished or smashed, as they said. And considering that mission, as you, as you um, <coughs> describe it, if we consider the um, issue of re-education, we have uh, discussed a little bit as we've gone through various um, topics. In your opinion, um, is, is there a relationship, um, and please tell me if there isn't any, uh, between the concept of one hand re-education uh, and the other, the concept of, the concept of, uh, of smashing the enemy? Um, well, I think the answer is no. Uh, there's no relationship between the two. No, there's really no, re no direct relationship. These are two uh, procedures that were thought to be uh, available uh, when you were confronted with a perceived enemy. Uh, if some of the evidence was uh, contradictory or ambiguous, uh, the person was considered to be a, an appropriate candidate for re-education. Uh, if not, it was a candidate for, uh, for execution. Now, the, here's a place, interesting enough, where the, the Cambodians just deviated very sharply from the Chinese model that they followed in so many other ways. There have been attempts to pin Chinese policies onto S21. The Chinese were relentlessly concerned with re-education. This could take, in some cases, 20 or 30 years. Uh, just a process. The Cambodians did very little 
in this regard. There's very little formal re-education, except among, ironically perhaps, party members who are constantly being taken to these study sessions, improved, criticize themselves, play the discipline, and become better party members. But they're very, they talk about re-education, but it doesn't happen at S21, because if it did, people would be released. There was some re-education, I think, at S24. People were given lectures, and they gave lectures. They apologized uh, to the photographer for his S21. Was, there was a blotch on a photograph of Pol Pot, and people said he put the blotch there, but he said, no, it's in the negative. And so he was released from S24. Nobody was released from S21. And, and just uh, focusing for a brief moment on the idea of um, people not being released. Um, you said yesterday that you, you would interview some of the survivors from uh, S21 um, based on the information data documents you've reviewed people you've interviewed. Um, how many survivors were there when the regime was toppled? And if you're not sure in the exact terms, give us a range. It seems to have been about a dozen, some the, uh, including some children. One, one of these people has recently surfaced as a middle-aged grown-up. He was there as a child, a child of one of the other prisoners who was killed. Um, Many of these people have passed away in recent years. I think there's, uh, to my knowledge, there's only two survivors left. But active, active survivors, about a dozen in 1979, uh, that, were, that came to the surface. The, the Vietnamese were quite assiduous in finding these people, not only to provide them data about how S21 used to work, but also to provide uh, anti Pol Pot. Uh, propaganda. And so these people were sought out, treated fairly well, and were, uh, so we, I think in other words, we, they located all the survivors. They, they were treated well, the survivors came to them and were given jobs and uh, salaries and so forth. Now, If we take a, a brief look uh, at um, documents discovered S as, at S21, um, could you give us uh, a brief overview of the, of the types and volume of documents discovered? By far the greatest proportion of documents are uh, so-called confessions. Uh, <coughs> these documents were very interesting in many ways for me to get voices coming out of the facility. I didn't use these as uh, evidence for genuine historical events except in some cases for biographical information that could be confirmed by the sources. But the material that was most useful in an analytical way were the administrative documents at the prison, including uh, handbook of instructions, uh, uh, considering political uh, work with prisoners, which is a word for interrogation, uh, study sessions that were held among by the cadre at the, um, at the uh, facility. Um, Confe I, I did use, I must say, uh, confessions by members of the uh, staff because uh, I felt that although most uh, of the confessions can be assumed to be a tissue of, of lies, it seems to me these guards and, and so on who were arrested at S21 for offenses, when they confessed to offenses, they were talking to people who knew, probably knew that these offenses had actually occurred. So I used some of that as information about how the place worked, confessions by former employees, or by employees who later became, by getting killed former employees. Um, now, what comes through, particularly the diaries of some of the uh, uh, chief interrogators are very interesting, and I use them a lot. Uh, th this will give you a, gives you a window into the way these people saw their work, the way they saw the revolution, uh, and the kind of 
dedication they brought to their work, uh, which I think a lot of this uh, showed up in the in uh, case one. I'm going to go back to it, but these, this was a very dedicated bunch of people who were in charge of this horrific, but in an odd sense, quite logical operation, which was to sweep clean on a continuous basis the party's enemies out of the, just keep cleaning up the, uh, the, uh, the country. Oh, I, I'm sorry. The country at the top levels. These were chosen people. There were there were prisons all over the country. Other other detention centers. A lot of this information has come out after I wrote this book. But they were not party cadre. Did not get imprisoned in those places. This place is pretty much limited to people who were either members of the party or soldiers or employees at ministries. They were government or party people at S21. Thank you. Um, now, because we're not concerned with the day-to-day -day workings of, of the prison at this, uh, this hearing, um, I want to go into a great amount of detail um, on the documentation, uh, other than uh, just to ask you one question. You have, you said, you have reviewed uh, confessions. Um, could you describe for the court what these documents look like? Uh, are they separated in sections? Are they written? Uh, handwritten type? How long um, are they, etc.? Well, only about... I've, I've, I've had the figure, I've had the figure back in my room, actually, but... It, I think it's like 3,800 were found at S21, another three or 400 found somewhere else. We know the prison, uh, everybody had said for, for uh, years the prison held 14,000 people until case one said 13,000, whatever, 478. So around 14,000. So a lot of the prisoners who went through there, the two alternatives, they either didn't produce confessions, there's some evidence that many people were trucked in and, and trucked right out to execution sites. Oh, there, three, there are three possibilities. The second is that their confession has just not been discovered. It was just lost in the chaos of the, of the late 70s. And the third is that these confessions have been culled, presumably by the uh, authorities of PRK who found that some because there are Vietnamese notes on many of the confessions. Uh, Vietnamese cadre, Phu Phuong and Khmer, went through these confessions to see what was going on. They're, they're very historically minded. And I'm just convinced that a lot of the confessions were pulled at that stage, but we don't know which ones they were, of course. So we've got 4,000. They're very different in the sense that the high party cadre ones are very long. Some of them are 800, 300, 400 pages, going for two or three months of interrogation. Some of the minor soldiers. Uh, are, and a lot of those are handwritten by the, by the men, mostly men, men themselves. The soldiers' ones are briefer, they're usually typed, and these are real falsifications in the sense I couldn't have time to do the, all the work, but I found paragraphs in different confessions they're absolutely identical to the typed out, just a, a standard kind of soldier's confession. This is what you, you, you put in and then move forward. Pretty much probably the man didn't, so he didn't say this stuff. It just got typed. Uh, one extraordinary footnote to S21, which I think is, is kind of indicative of DK. I've never found a typing mistake, not a single one. These typists were good and they were frightened because typing mistakes would be on purpose. So the documents are very neatly, neatly uh, prepared. Um, they're easy to read in that, in that sense. The camera is not wildly complicated. Uh, but you know, it's a daunting bunch of documents because they're, these people don't know the, what's going to happen. They're not told what's going to happen. So they're struggling to survive. And they're not told they won't. But as I was working, I knew every one of these people had been executed, so it gave it a kind of a horrible flavor to study, that's all. And just if we can augment that um, very comprehensive answer um, with a description of the form uh, or the, the, the structure of the, of the confessions, if, if, if there was a, a, a common structure. 
Yeah, pretty much they started with an autobiography. The autobiography would give facts about the person, his parents, his birthplace, and so on. Uh, then his class origins, class uh, relationship. Uh, then his history of activity uh, in the party, if there was such a history. Uh, then, and this was in common with all autobiographies which everybody had to prepare. That, as to all the employees prepared these same, followed the same format in their autobiographies that they presented to their people in charge of them. Uh, following that came two things. One was the history of my treasonous activities. And this is the actual confession, where they confess to uh, various uh, uh, offenses, which are cataloged in my book. Some of the offenses are wildly absurd. Some are maybe so, you don't know. And then finally, in many confessions, particularly the important people, a uh, list of associates. And this would long strings, they were called psi, long strings of, of people. Sometimes you get the impression that this person is just spinning out all the names he knows. Other times more conscientious. In many cases, some of these people are brought in to S21 because they've been, I think the rule was it was showed up in one of the uh, interviews. Oh, gosh. There was three. If you're cited in three confessions, there's authority to go out to wherever you are and pull you in. If three people have named this person. So what you find, obviously, if, if it's the, the closer you get to the center of the party, the more and more duplication you get, so the, the thing rolls up out of, out of control. But that's a, not, not a, they didn't predict this. So generally, these are fairly standard format. Um, now, the, often in one or two sessions, now the important people, people like Von Vett and uh, Koi Tuan and uh, some of these people, they were interrogated for days on end and produced a confession that was then put aside and the people came out. Now, now tell us the right story. Oh, so the person would write out another story that he thought might meet the requirements. No, no. Now a third, I really want the truth, another 50 pages, contradicting the preceding. And so they, they really thought they were getting toward a, a true story. And actually what they were getting, I, I would just say, was they were getting a document from a person who was just getting completely uh, no sense of what what was wanted or what the truth was even. Thank you. បាទកម្មការសម្ណាការសម្រាប់ថ្ងៃនេះដល់ពេលសំរមមនឹងសម្រាប់ហើយនៅប៉ុន្តែដោយអង្គយំរះត្រូវពិភាក្សាជាមួ
จอเจ้าปะเออเธอมีใครเออเธอสาธิตยาสมพิโตเพอร์ชมพูการคานิสเราแต่ถ้ายืนจังจงเราอยู่เชนเลยเชนตัวนุ๊กเข้มจังผู้สมนาพี่แต่ตัวตัวนึงเอกสารจังเอากอดเป็นนักสำหรับไงสักนุ๊กทำไปทันเดียท่าเพื่อคิดถึงอ๊อฟบานตรีมเรียบชอมคิดสมรสยาเดลุกศาสตราจารย์สมรู้เดลุกอายุบานุคือเป็นนักมือเชนาตอนใดตอนนั้นและถ้าคุณสามารถที่จะคุณสามารถที่จะคุณสามารถที่จะคุณสามารถที่จะคุณสามารถที่จะคุณสามารถที่จะคุณสามารถที่จะคุณสามารถที่จะคุณสามารถที่จะคุณสามารถที่จะคุณสามารถที่จะคุณสามารถที่จะคุณสามารถที่จะคุณสามารถที่จะคุณสามารถที่จะคุณสามารถที่จะคุณสามารถที่จะคุณสามารถที่จะคุณสามารถที่จะคุณสามารถเจ้าไปลูกสาวตาจ้าทำเจอดิเจ้าเชี่ยวประตองอยู่ในสมสัวตือดำนางสัตว์ปีนี้ถ้าตาตาลูกตระกาเปรียบเรียบประมาณติดนงกาตั้งสำนวนในดาวจิตบัวสัตย์ใจเนี่ยจุ่มเนียสัตย์จ่าดีวิตเฉลยนี่ Mr. President ดำนางสัมยาลูกทีน I believe we need ยมชื่อทา between one and a half and two hours tomorrow I'm more than happy to to conclude in in less than two hours I'm I'm very apprehensive about giving an exact estimate because we haven't asked the questions but if one and a half to two hours could be allocated to us would be most grateful. บอกคุณเจ้าข้างกรมเมตุวีนอมกรมนางดาวมันดังรับรับวินิจฉันขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบคุณมากที่ถามคำถามของคุณขอบค
Madam Chair, thank you, Mr. President. Just a point of clarification: it would appear that the civil parties only have the the rest of the morning session and not the afternoon. At least that's how it came across on the English translation. So I assume that you meant the rest of the day. Yes, and the rest of the day. Yes, and the rest of the day. But I, I, I'm not here to challenge you, but I'm just uh, pointing that out. The next question is, what is the next question? The next question is, the next question is, the next question is, กรมสหมิตรวีนอมุกดำนางดาวเมืองดังรอบรอบปีนี้จำนายไอ้มิตรวีกาปีคดีคือหนึ่งบนโต๊ะจับประดามสู่ดิ่งดาวเนื้อไ